students. Okay. Welcome to Malloy College. I'm Maria Fiata. I'm one of the nursing lab instructors here. I am a registered nurse. I hold my degree in Masters in Nursing, um, which means that I went four years beyond the college level where you would get your bachelor's. That's going to be the minimal level of entry that you're going to need to become a nurse. So you're going to need to come to four years of college. If you want to teach, then you need to go another, uh, another anywhere from full-time to part-time, two and a half to five years. Okay. And then if you really wanted to get high up, you can go for your doctorate or your PhD. And that's usually another five years. Now, the beautiful thing about nursing, the career of nursing, is it's a wonderful profession. You have many options. I started out wanting to do pediatrics when I was about your age. Okay? And then when I went to all through school, I kind of developed a likeness for med surge. Med surge is more of the adult population where we deal with general problems. Um, when I graduated, I, grad, uh, I decided I wasn't that strong in medicine, and I decided to work on that. I was still thinking I would go into pediatrics, and guess what, I fell in love with surgery. So, throughout my career, it's not always what you start out with. The beautiful thing with professional nursing is there's many opportunities. I worked on a flow team in a hospital, um, so which means I went to every different area. And one thing that you have to maintain is you always need to know where you are and you always need to be familiar with the environment that you're working in, the population that you're dealing with, their cultures. Okay, that's really something important, guys. This is kind of a question I would ask on a test is what's important to know about the care that you're going to give would be knowing my population, um, knowing that how you take care of an adult is going to be definitely different from how you take care of a child. You have to always be professional, okay? Watch how you speak, okay? We don't use the slang terms when we're referring to body parts, okay? Um, patients are always very, very scared, so you want to always make them comfortable, and you want them to be able to ask you a question and to establish trust. That's probably the biggest thing is they need to trust you because when they come into the hospital, they lose their independence. We're normally used to eating and drinking whenever we want, and maybe take, if you had to take medicines, in your case, probably just vitamins, you may be just taking them at one time. When you come into the hospital, you have to go on the hospital's time schedule. So you give up that independence, and you still want to offer those patients who are probably scared as much independence as you possibly can. And they need their families, too, so you want to incorporate the family into the plan of care that you're rendering for that patient. Um, let's see. You have hospital nursing, and there's many different areas within hospital nursing, which I mentioned to you too, which was the med surge. There's pediatrics, which is the baby. There's obstetrics, which is where the mother gives birth to the baby. Um, there's a psychiatric component of nursing with patients who have some mental illness. And um, there's critical care where the patients are really, really very, very ill. There's emergency room nursing. I'm trying to think of anything. Uh, if you're branching, you can also work into clinics. If you wanted to, you can also do pharmaceuticals where you're learning about new drugs and trying to go out into the communities and educate patients on that. Um, community nursing is also a beautiful thing. I ended up doing some of that too, which was called home care. And when you do home care, you're I'm moving on you. <laughs> when you do home care, you are in the patient's home. You're in their environment. You have to respect that environment. Okay? So it's kind of a flip around from what I told you in the hospital. You're there and you're, you're working along their schedule as opposed to when in the hospital they're working along yours. Let's see. I'm trying to think what else you might want to uh, turn to. Do you have any questions so far? Mm -hmm. Or like those big people in the <coughs> We have, the way the curriculum here at Malloy College is set up, it's a four-year program where we get your baccalaureate degree, or that was what I told you was the bachelor's of science, the minimal level of entry. The way the program goes here is students learn in a class, 
in the classroom, pretty much the way you're learning now. It's called theory or lecture. Then they have to come and practice, okay? And that's the lab, and that's what you both areas are here, where what you've learned in the classroom, you now practice. It's much more hands-on. Okay? So these mannequins here, uh, you can practice taking blood pressures, doing different <coughs> skills. You'll notice those little round circles that they have, those tubes coming out of their neck. Those, <coughs> those are tracheostomies. You would manage to take care of the patient with that. Usually we have IVs in them. Um, so you'd be working there. So what you're learning in the classroom, you're expanding on and doing hands-on here. And then the third component is you actually go into the hospital and actually work on live pa patients. So that's what they're there for. <coughs> we do have a patient downstairs. I don't know if we have access or you have time. Is a, a simulator. And he is the same thing as these mannequins. And it's almost like the Wizard of Oz where we have a nurse that stands that's behind a glass, and she can make him uh, walk, not walk, talk and breathe, and make him get either healthier or sick. We, if you want, we can. I can see if she can. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And maybe she could turn him on. I'm not sure. We'll, I'll just double check. And that's how you learn some more. Here, the I, I promise I'll get to you. Um, here is where um, <coughs> you learn to make them. You correct the mistakes. Okay. So you can't hurt anybody here. So don't be afraid when you're coming to school to make the mistakes. We want to work with you to get you stronger and better. It took me many years to learn so many things. And you know what? As I told you, I just got my master's. I've been nurse doing nursing for 32 years. You're never too old to learn. But it is a profession where you have to apply yourself. You, don't, you can't take it lightly. You have to really do your work. You have to excel in math and uh, your sciences. <coughs> I didn't mean to be. <coughs> in the clinic, it's, uh, in the hospital, the patient stays in, and the care is being rendered there. In a clinic, it's usually on an outpatient basis, and you're just coming in for acute care and then going back home. So when you were first born, most likely, instead of go, um, you can also work in a pediatrician's office or a doctor's office. That's where the clinic comes to mind, right off the top of my head, is when you got vaccinations. Okay, in order for you to come to school and you know, to stay healthy as a baby, you end up getting shots. Uh, the measles, the mumps, rubella, all these, all these different uh, shots. You had to have had them because you couldn't be in school if you didn't. And that's what you hear the big controversy going on all in the news. Let's relate some, uh, some current events. Do you hear that in Disneyland, some people went to Disneyland and then a whole bunch of people ended up getting the measles? That's because they weren't vaccinated from somewhere. Now, this is a, it's a beautiful place. It's international. So maybe in other countries, people didn't need those <coughs> shots. So they didn't go to those clinics. So they didn't go to their doctor's office to get it. But it became a global problem because they mixed in with people who <coughs> had, had people who had their shots and people who hadn't had their shots. That's another thing, global nursing. A lot of nurses like to not stay stationary in one place, and they end up doing uh, travel nursing, which means they're on airplanes and they're going to different maybe countries, like Nepal just had this earthquake, right? So there's a whole bunch of nurses that are going over there. Some countries like Haiti is still needing some help there, so there's always nurses there. It's a wonderful profession, but I really have to tell you, you have to work hard. <coughs> You always want to be presentable. You always want to be educated, staying on current events, and always reading. Because medicine and healthcare changes constantly. Mm -hmm. Can you can tell a little bit about what oral surgeons? Oral surgeons? Oral surgeons is not nursing, though. An oral surgeon is a doctor who takes care of everything going on basically in your mouth. Okay. Uh, he's more and more advanced than the dentist. Uh, they end up cutting into the gums and doing different implants and different things in the mouth. Um, you don't really see as much nursing there, um, but you make me think of uh, nursing also goes into rehab, where after you have some surgery and maybe you're not moving as well, or maybe you had a stroke, there's a lot of rehab nursing that's available where the nurses help the patients to get stronger, learn how to walk. They uh, work with physical therapists and occupational therapists. If you know anybody who has cancer, there is oncology nursing. Um, and that's, it's, 
It's all probably on the sad side, but you also help those patients to live to their fullest capacity. And that's what it is, is again, going back to offering as much independence, offering as much quality of life, if you understand what that term means. Okay? You just don't want to exist. You want patients, even if they're sick, to be enjoying life as much as possible. Any other questions? Do you want to know how I got into this? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When I was younger, I didn't want to be a nurse at first. Well, I always wanted to be a nurse, but I really thought I wanted to be much more of a teacher. Oh, that's okay. okay. And um, my, my history has come down to that my parents um, ended up getting sick. My father had, had, a, had a series of strokes. So I knew, would you ask Teresa, uh, uh, Karen, Karen, the young lady there, if they would be possible to go see Sim? Okay, the little shorter one. Because that's how my life, I needed to um, take care of my parents, really nursing. The desire to nurse really came out stronger than the desire to teaching. But the desire to teach never went away. So I'm lucky enough that I was able to do two things as a career that I both like. You teach? I teach and I also, but I teach nursing. So you see how I had that, that, that beautiful thing and it was always ongoing and there's always learning. So I'm really fortunate in that capacity and I hope that you guys, you know, would really, really consider nursing and realize as you get older, there's still an ability to use that nursing for another extension.